Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Last time we left off, we finished our investigation inside the in-flight shop, and for all the information that we now found out, including like, you know, that suitcase and what, finding that bloody cloth in it, it could possibly mean that, well, maybe he wasn't killed in the elevator, he could have been killed somewhere else, so we have that information going on, and we could possibly have a couple new suspects, one of them including possibly Rhoda, just because there's like some assumptions here and there, but let's not jump to any conclusions until we know for sure who did it. So let's just go ahead and uh, continue on with the, uh, well, this is yeah, pretty much the middle point of this uh, case. So as you can see, we finally landed, I'm assuming, in our destination. And, well, here we go. I know that once we had landed, I'm supposed to let the local police take over. And thanks to this... Uh, you know, people have been telling me it's like supposed to be Tenero Road. Tenero, because it's like a road. It, her name's like a pun of the Renero Road or whatever. In which I kind of I, I learned about that previously, but ah, whatever. I'm still going to call her woman. And Miss Mealy, I was able to preserve the crime scene, but I just can't shake it. I wasn't able to talk with her in, pri in private. So I'm left wondering just what was she up to? What did she do what she did? Why did she do what she did? There must be a way for me to continue my investigation. I've been expecting you, Miles Edgeworth. That theme music, it can't be. It is! Oh my god, I haven't seen you in a long time. Francisca, I thought you were still in Germany. I go where I am needed, and wherever there are criminals to be caught. Her name is Francisca von Karma, the daughter of my mentor, Manfred von Karma. She, like myself, is a prosecutor. Are you heading up this case? It would be a bit of a relief if you are. Don't you try to flatter me, Miles Edgeworth. I'm placing you under arrest. What? It's quite frustrating, actually. I hope to extract my revenge on you in a different venue, but I'll have to take what I can get. Never thought I'd see the day when a disciple of the House of Von Karma would become a criminal. Have you no shame? Wait! It was all a big misunderstanding! I didn't kill the victim! A misunderstanding? I heard all about the murder over the police radio from the captain himself. You waited for the victim on the first floor and I'm beaten to death. Francisca, do you honestly believe I killed a man? I suppose I should reserve judgment until after I have investigated this for myself. I can put your arrest on hold until then. That's as it should be. Ha! Huh. I don't need a lecture on how to perform my duties from you from you of all people. To be perfect in every way, the fulfillment of that creed alone is all that I strive for. Well, I have my own creed which I must fulfill, so why don't we solve this together? I have to get going. The crime scene awaits. Don't you dare leave town. Trust me, I had no intention to. Detective Gumshoe! Yes, sir! Too slow! No! Listen up. I'm leaving you in charge of watching this man. Don't mess up, understand? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, am I supposed to guard him? A simple yes or no, detective. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Understood, sir. You just leave it to me. Miles Edgeworth, if you interfere with my investigation, I'll arrest you on the spot. Are we clear? Now then, if you'll excuse me. Good to see you again, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Boy, am I glad to see you're okay. Thank you, Detective. I believe, I believe in you, sir. You can lean on me. I'll get you through this. I have to admit, I'm a bit curious as to what Francisca is up to. Maybe I should ask a good detective. Very well. In that case, I have a few questions for you. So, yeah, we have to talk to Gumshoe real quick. But, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but up here on the right, you know, right here, the guy I'm standing next to, not, not on the left, not on my right, but on my left, the guy looks kind of familiar. Let's talk to him a little bit. Hmm, looking from behind. I think I've seen this man somewhere before. Nom 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 nom. In Soviet Russia, world flags lunches eat you. Uh, 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 found it, law. Oh, I feel a wave of creative powers coming out. It's over 9,000 holes. For the next le movie, it's gonna be the Steel Samurai, Warrior of Neo, Neo Old Tokyo. Versus the World Samurai, Champion of Earth. It's gonna rock soar so many box soars. So Steel Samurai is finally getting a movie. 
Yeah. They never say who this is, but you know damn well this is Sal, Sal, Sal Manella, uh, the director of uh, The Steel Samurai, back in the third case of the original Phoenix Wright game. Oh yeah, he was interesting yeah, to interact with. So yeah, yeah, let's talk to Gumshoe now. Let's see, yep, yeah, right here. So how is the invest initial investigation going? We just shipped the body off to the coroner's office. And we're taking statements now, sir. That sounds like Franziska. She was always good at quick responses to a case. That says she was, uh, a little too quick, sir. Oh? How so? Uh, um, I rushed on over as soon as I got word of this affair, sir. But somehow, when I got here, Mr. Karma was already here barking out, barking out, barking out orders at everyone. It was kind of creepy, as though she knew that there had been a murder or something, and had come in and advance to await your flight's arrival. That is sort of odd. She did show up rather quickly and out of the out of the blue. Plus, I still don't know why she's here in America. There must be some backstory to all of this. Hmm. Perhaps we're gonna figure that out. Mr. Carmen just kind of popped up in a prosecutor's office about a week ago, sir. Something about chasing down leads related to a certain incident. No details? It's kind of top secret, so she can't talk about it even with me, sir. Knowing her, the only type of talking she likes to do is with her whip. Plus, I doubt the top secret part was what stopped her from talking to you, Detective. Yeah, definitely. Although I wonder if her case was, has anything to do with mine. Anyway, let's, that's about all the info I have, sir. We should find out more as we investigate. Yes, it's high time to resume my investigation. Starting with talking to the people involved in this case afresh. So now we can actually leave towards the left here, and I believe, uh... Yeah, it actually takes us back to first class. I mean, we were in the terminal, but now we're back in the airplane. So you must be a captain. Why, yes I am, and who might you be? I'm the Prodigy Prosecutor, Francisca Von Karma, and I have a few questions for you. Ah, uh, don't you dare, Captain! Getting friendly with another woman? I'll never forgive you if you do! What are you talking about? I only have eyes for you, my dear Cammy. I wouldn't bet money on our dear Captain to be much of a reputable person. Sure you don't want to ask the Captain some questions, sir? He was in the cockpit the entire time. I highly doubt he would know anything of use. Anyway, I like to leave that type of witness to Francisco and her whip. Ah, oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Ah! Oh! And Miles is like, yep, oh, yep, there you go. Gumption's like, aww. Oh. Too bad. Ah, oh, there goes uh, LeBlanc. Pissy as always. Now see here! Ah! Oh! Sorry, 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 I'm sorry! How long do you intend to hold me? It's impossible for me to be the criminal, I told you! Mr. LeBlanc. Oh, it is you! Tell this man to stop st stopping me from going! Time is money! I don't have- I don't even have one second of wasteful time to spend! Eh, uh, jeez. Guess we're gonna have to talk to him. Did you finish talking- taking the statement yet? Yep, well done, sir. I do not concern if you're not do done examining the cargo hold. I want my cargo back! What's his cargo? If you make a single scratch on my art, you will pay! Arts? What sort of art? Mr. LeBlanc is an art dealer, so he's got a bunch of artwork down in the cargo hold, sir. There's practically a mountain of them, large and small. From folk customs to sto stone statues, I sell all kinds of arts. Folk costumes. Speaking of which, Mr. LeBlanc's hat kind of looks like that other piece of cloth. Yeah. The other piece of... Oh, damn, wait a minute. Got to present them some, don't I? Yeah, here we go. The other piece of cloth that we got from inside that suitcase... Yeah, the bloody cloth! It looks just like the thing he's wearing. Yeah! There you go, present it! Mr. LeBlanc, can you please take a look at this for me? Hmm. Oh! It's a Borginian cloth! As I suspected, your head is made of the same material, I suppose. Yes, of course! This fabric is so famous, orders come from all over the seas for over all more! Okay. So it's a Borginian cloth. And this is the cargo you were talking about earlier. No, no, no! My cargo this time is much, much more. Much, much, many gigantic. You, detective! Where can I have my cargo moved? When? You can get your cargo back when you're done investigating, sir. The stubbornness of you police, it is no good! It is no good that attendant refuses to exit the attendant's room, too. That attendant? What if he's talking about Rhoda? Hmm. 
Perhaps. But uh, let's talk. Maybe he has. Yeah, here we go. We'll talk about her. What did you mean by that attendant, Mr. LeBlanc? She was taken to the tennis room for their interview, her interview. And then they still have not come out. They have make no sign of coming out either. I was finished with my own interview much earlier, quicker than her. Why is her interview the only one that's taking up so much time? That is interesting. Miles Edgeworth, you were given free reign to examine the plane, weren't you? Yes, I was able to obtain a cooperation of flight attendants. Speaking of attendants, I'd like to speak with Miss Tenario. I wonder if you might grant me permission to enter the flight attendant's room? Hmm. Before I do, you still have to clear up a few issues surrounding your own circumstances. I understand. You may have tricked those attendants with your sophisticated talking, but you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Miles Edgeworth. Great. Great. Oh, you all knew this is gonna happen. So let's, uh... Listen to her logic. Let's not complicate things and go with the most obvious conclusion. The scene of the crime was here, and a very large body was discovered. From the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant until his body was found, the only person in this lounge the entire time was you, Miles Edgeworth. This unmistakably makes you the likeliest suspect. Hmm. The likeliest suspect, Francisca? Do you have a problem with that? No, but it's not like you to use such vague wording. You're usually a bit more... absolute. I'm simply trying to watch out for you. Or is my kindness too hard for you to comprehend? Thank you, but your allegiance is, un is unnecessary, for I will prove my innocence soon enough. If I want to continue my investigation, I'll have to break her line of logic fast. Okay, so I guess we can uh, do that now with this rebuttal. So... Let's see, the scene of the crime was here. Okay, she says it was here. Okay, wait a minute. What about the suitcase that we figured out? We kind of determined that it could be possible to transport the body in there. Hmm. So that doesn't make it doesn't make it concrete that the scene happened in the lounge. It would appear that you did not have all the information you needed after all. Oops, I hit my mic. Sorry about that. And what does that mean? I found a nice piece of evidence just before I was forced to stop investigating. A piece that proves that a body was moved from a different location. Oh, got her. The killer used a suitcase to move the victim's body. Meaning that the real scene of the crime is not this lounge after all. Objection! Now, who's the one, who's the one rash, rashly jumping to conclusions? Excuse me? All you did was find this piece of cloth inside the suitcase. That doesn't prove that the body was moved. It could be that the killer simply chose that suitcase as a good place to hide the cloth. I expect you would come up to that conclusion. It would seem I can't escape that easily. You should know better than that. A Von Karma is perfect in every way. Sure. Ah, but did you know that the killer definitely wheeled the suitcase around at some point? If there's, as if there's proof of that, where's the proof that the suitcase has moved around? If you remember, we looked at the bottom of the suitcase at the wheel, we noticed that there was a uh, grape juice on it, so let's go ahead and present her to grape juice footprints. The spilled grape juice in front of the elevator! Yes, and I'm, I like to draw your attention to this area here. Where's evidence that proves the killer dragged the suitcase through here? And, and as you can see as well, there are drags or wheel, you know, wheel marks here, well, you're assuming anyway, of uh of where suitcase was gonna move, so boom. Take that. This mark here. Wouldn't you say it looks suspiciously like tracks from two wheels? I suppose. Further, there's also grape juice residue on the wheels of that suitcase. This means that the suitcase containing the victim's body definitely passed through here. I suppose this means that the killer did move the victim's body from somewhere else. I'm glad you come to our sense your senses. Objection. Not so fast! This still doesn't put you in the clear. Not by a long shot! Dang it. Okay, fine. We can listen to her other logic. You prepared yourself and acquired a bank piggy bank before the plane hit that turbulence. And then you waited for the victim in the lounge, where you beat him to death. Then, while you were in the elevator when the victim's body with the victim's body stuffed in the suitcase, the plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body from within the suitcase. With no way out, you hastily put the suitcase back where you had taken it from. I pretend to be the discoverer of the body. 
Not a bad bit of logic for something you thought of on the fly. Just what are you insinuating? That I will show you exactly how flawed your logic is. No matter how strong of a face you put on, not even you can hide your fears from me. I'll expose the flaws in your logic in one fell swoop. And I guess we can leave this uh, rebuttal in. It shouldn't be too bad. So she says, hey, we prepared the piggy bank before the plane hit the turbulence. Now, if you guys remember, we know that this thing was taken out of the display case after the turbulence. Because there's no glass inside the case, so that means it fell out. So, yeah. There you go. The fact that you took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony is to be commended. Your legal promise is certainly something to be feared. Evidence and logic. Essential tools that those who would stay in the courtroom must learn to master. But what if there was a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This Mr. I Fly Piggy Bank is just, is just such a fake. It is not the real murder weapon. What? The timing when the, bank, the, when the bank was taken from the shop is important. It was taken after turbulence had occurred. But then, what about the blood on the bank? What do you make of that? I assume it was added after murder when the killer fabricated this weapon. Looking at it this way, the killer basically did three things after turbulence. After exiting the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then the killer proceeded to pick the bank up from the floor and took it to fabricate a fake murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. Finally, the victim's wallet was planted on my person personage or personage, whatever, in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done so that I would be framed for a murder of Mr. Ackby Hicks. You there! Yes, ma'am! Other than this piggy bank, was there anything else resembling a murder weapon found? We didn't find anything in this lounge or in the shop that could be used as one, ma'am. Most of the items that could be a, could have been used were broken during the turbulence. And the remaining items will test negative for any trace of blood. I see. While, while Miles Adjorf appears, uh, your tactics still are still at oh, wait. I did not read that right. It appears your stall, stall tactics are at an end. That's possible, it's just hidden somewhere, sir. Die! If the criminal had wanted to hide the weapon in a safer place, I'd think the weapon would have been hidden in the same place as the bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth was hidden inside a suitcase, it signals to me that the killer had not prepared a more secure place to hide the evidence. Which means that the murder weapon is either still on the murderer's personage, or whatever, or is still in the or is still at the real crime scene. Objection! There's one more possibility. And that would be that the piggy bank is in fact a real weapon. But didn't we just... Let me finish! The killer took the bank out of the display case before the turbulence by opening the lock on the display case door. And it was at that time the glass pane on the door was broken. I say it's a perfectly reasonable line of reasoning, wouldn't you? Let's see... So that means that the killer had the key to the display case... Francisca, the person you're talking about. Not so fast, I'm not finished. The person I'm talking about also committed another sin. She tricked the captain and granted you permission to conduct your investigation. Yes, it is a sin of lying. Speaking of which, I recall you also wish to speak with her. Yes. Very well, permission granted, but only if, you, if I can sit in on your interrogation. Do we understand each other? I have no intention of interrogating her, but you are welcome to accompany me if you so wish. She is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. And we'll do that next time, guys. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth. I'll see you guys later.